you know, the big thing now are these animal fabrics. And so in this photograph, we're going to use the zebra print. I'm going to give you a little rundown on how I do this photograph, and it has a little bit of a Hollywood theme to it. Uh, the way this whole thing started is I have a photographer friend of mine, Ken Cook, in Salinas, California, and he's been a photographer for over 50 years. So I was looking through some old photographs in his studio from the 40s and the 50s and came across a photograph, something like this, and I'll sh kind of give you my little spin on how I do it. So to start, I've taken some fabric and I've hung it on the background back here. And the lights that we're going to use are pretty simple. They're called Westcott TD5 Spider Lights. And what's nice about them is they're daylight balanced fluorescent bulbs inside these units. What's nice about a fluorescent bulb is that it's frosted or it's coated. And what it'll do is it'll diffuse that bulb right at the beginning. So a lot of times if you watch me, I won't even use the diffusion material in front of the softbox. I'll just use that bulb raw because the quality that's coming out of it is so beautiful. So that's why a lot of times what we're using is actually the box itself to control the light. So inside this unit, you can see there's five bulbs. There's a smaller one in the center, four big ones on the outside. These are 50 watt bulbs. So what else is unique about it is that they're frosted. And anytime you have a frosted bulb, it's pretty much coming out with a beautiful quality of light, even without the diffuser. So what I'll probably do is just get rid of this throw it away because now we're just going to use this box to control the light where it's going and keep the quality of light right where I want it to go. And what it actually is, it's a fixture and you just mount your soft box right into that fixture and then you can turn on different amounts of bulbs to how bright you would like the light to be. If you're a photographer and you've been in this for a long time or you're just getting started, I would encourage you to really try this because it's really one of the greatest things as far as lighting goes on the market today. My hair light's gonna be opposite the main light, so these two are always opposite each other. But what's unique about it is that it's a strip light, so it'll light the top of the hair and the sides of the hair. It has a fabric grid in here, and that's just gonna keep the light from spilling onto the background, because I want the background to be lit with a background light right in the center. If this was to spill onto the background, it'd be brighter over here than it would be over there. And we want to make sure that this gets directed exactly where we want it. That's why it's placed here. So I'm going to come in with this hair light fairly close to her and just kind of tilt that in. And then you're controlling how bright you want that hair light by how many bulbs you turn on. Back behind our subject is the background light and it has a dome on it. And what the dome is doing is it's diffusing the light and spreading it because I want this to come up close and give some fall off on the background. So that will keep it being even more diffused and it's got a silver cap on the back so nothing comes back at our subject. So we're just going to place that in the center. And then we'll come in with this for the hair light. Fairly simple. Where the finesse is going to come in is when we take our main light and we control all the light. I'm going to make the light dark down here and we're going to get all the light into the face. So I want you to watch how I control the main light. Okay, I've shut the lights out in the room so that we can see a little bit more of how I'm gonna finesse this light. But what's unique about this light, and most photographers don't know, is that it rotates. A lot of soft boxes will rotate. And so it's gonna be very important now as we go to control this light. So the pose that we've got her in is we've got this bare shoulder here, and we're gonna get her to bring her shoulder up. Then the next thing in the pose is we're gonna slant the body, get some diagonals to it. So your back shoulder, just slant it back a little bit and turn your body this way a little more. Okay, hold that. Now we can see what the hair light's doing. It's got all this, it's lighting the side here. And again, you just gotta look through there, watch that, make sure nothing's spilling out in some odd spots. Okay, so here we go with our main lights. We've got our light, and if you've listened to me talk before, then you'll notice to keep that shadow out of that eye out of there. So I'm gonna bring the light forward till that gets out of there. Now this shoulder is still as bright as the face. So what we're gonna do is take this box and I'm gonna rotate it and we're gonna skim that light right off that shoulder. And this shadow here, we're gonna get to come down a little more. And so I hope you can see 
where the cutoff of that light is and as it comes off that shoulder. So when you look at a photograph, you want the subject to go right to the eyes and that's with your lighting. But if you, there's other spots in the subject that are too bright, like the ears or the shoulder, it's going to distract you from going right to the face. Now, by controlling the different intensities would be how bright our hair light's going to end up being. So we've got that right in there. Now we're going to come in with a reflector and fill in some of those shadows. Another really cool reflector on the market is this reflector we call the Triflector. And it's tri meaning three reflectors, but it's all on one stand. And what's cool about it is that you can take each one of these reflectors and kind of adjust them around and control your shadows. And so obviously the more you tilt it in or tilt it off would be how deep those shadows are or how close you get to the subject and how you rotate it. So it's kind of convenient to have it all on one stand. So uh, a lot of times we use this in any type of photograph that's more of a glamour shot and just a head shot. And when you get into the three quarters and the full lengths, obviously you couldn't leave the reflector in there and that's when we'll take the light and we'll actually put another light on the floor and shoot it up to get rid of the bags under the eyes. But for a nice close up, it's a beautiful thing to use because you can get a little bit more control out of all the way around the subject's face. And we're gonna adjust it a little bit. And we're trying to get some nice little sparklies in those eyes in there. Now what's nice about these lights is that they're constant. They're constantly on, they don't flash. So you, whatever you're seeing right there with your ratios is how that photograph's gonna come out. Look how pretty that is. Okay, so one more time we're gonna show you how we finesse this light. So here's with our light, just aim direct. And now watch as we come in and tilt it off and feather it in there. Now we're gonna come in with our reflector. Add a little bit to those shadows. Then we're going to come in with our hair light. And then we're going to come in with our background light. And let's take some photographs. In the first photograph, we can see how the main light is just aimed direct. It's not feathered. And you can see how bright it is on one side of the face compared to the other. Now we take the main light and we feather it or we aim it past center and we've evened out the brightness of the light on both sides of the face. Now we come in with the triflector and fill in the shadows. Now we turn the hair light on and you can see how the hair is a continuation of the main light. Now we add the background light to give dimension to the photograph. Now we take a look at the results of the final photograph and you can see how we've taken the main light and placed it in Rembrandt position and we've taken the triflector and we've backed it off a little bit to increase the shadows and make this photograph dramatic.